Greetings everyone, this is Shahar Khan and in this session we are going to learn about local file inclusion or LFI vulnerability. Basically this vulnerability allows an attacker to include or read files on the server. Local files are actually files that are located in the same system like um, every file located in my own system are local files of my own system. So this vulnerability can allow an attacker to read files stored on the targeted website or application. It's a server side vulnerability and can cause serious damage. We are able to include any code and this can lead to remote code execution if properly exploited. The main cause of this vulnerability is the improper um you could say inclusion of user input like if the user input is improperly included in the include function of php or any other function that includes files on the system this can cause the vulnerability like in php we have the include function that is used for including files if user input is improperly passed to include function that can cause file inclusion vulnerabilities. In the next lesson we will learn how to find and exploit local file inclusion vulnerability. Greetings everyone this is Shawar Khan and in this lesson we are going to learn how to find local file inclusion vulnerability. We got a test application here that's taking the file parameter and a file name as its value. This is actually a file that's located here. We got two files rockin.html, home.html. Now, if we click here, we'll be redirected to a login panel. And you can see here we got a value login.html. Now, it seems like it's including the file name. What's happening the behind the scene is it's actually taking the file name as input and included it into a path. Then it's using include function so the file is included then. Now if the login if the, if the file name is login.html the file name will be something like um, www.html lfi and login.html so the file will be loaded. Now to see if this is vulnerable to local file inclusion, we have to try including any local file. Now mostly lo uh, Linux system have this file. We can use etc and something like etc passwords, etc password or host or allow or anything else. We have to see if we can get its content. And you can see here. We got the content of host.allow file. Which is same as this. Now let's try create uh, let's try creating a file here. Um shar.txt and let's call it now you can see that we will be able to read that because we can include local files here. As you can see that we got its content. Now the use of a slash and double dot means that we are traveling back to the previous path. It's a kind of you know going back from a sub directory to the parent directory. So just like that. So, if you are able to include local files and able to read its contents, it's the local file inclusion vulnerability. In the next lesson, we will learn how to exploit this vulnerability in order to execute commands on the system. Greetings everyone, this is Shahar Khan and in this lesson, we will learn how to exploit local file inclusion vulnerability. In our previous lesson, we learned how to include local files located in the system of the target application. Now what we have to do that is we have to 
somehow inject our payload into the target machine. We have to make sure any file created in the system is having our payload so we can include it. Now there are two cases. The first case is that we have to include files like pros, uh, self and wiren. Now mostly system have this file and it shows us the user agent that we are using. What we can do is that we can modify our user agent header into a PHP code and it will be included now then actually. But in this case you can see that it's not accessible. The next thing is that we can try to poison access logs like apache access logs or anything else but we have to find out their exact path we can code something that enumerates each and every path so let's try to find something i've already coded a simple script for doing that we have to try each and every path in order to find which one the target application is using so let's try this file and let's see if we can find anything so as you can see here we got two files that have different kind of length the one is access log and the other is error.log so this one is the one we are looking for it's the access log files file that we in which we can inject our payload as you can see here We, each request sent to the server is logged here like whatever we open now what we have to do is that we have to inject our payload here for that we have to make a get request to the server so our payload will be saved here I'm using burp suite for that now if I type my name here or anything else it will be saved so let's try saving our input here or whatever let's try let's just send it to repeater because we have to use it multiple times alright so let's see if we got the request saved here all right you can see that our input is now saved what we have to do is that we have to include a php code here so whenever our access log is included our payload executes now let's change the user agent to something like system system or this will show us the information of the system and you can see here we got the kernel version and the system Linux so that means our command is executed now as we are able to execute our code what we have to do is that we have to send a shell or whatever we want so let's listen on port 137 and what we have to do is that we have to send a reverse connection let's simply use netcat 
we can use bash and other stuff let's see if we got the connection here all right now let's execute the code once loaded our code will be executed all right and we got our code here so that's how to exploit a remote a local file inclusion vulnerability to remote code execution